Hey guys, Mr. Hyatt here. This is the Chapter 9 AP Biology Lecture. Uh, it's all about cellular respiration. Uh, this is a big, big chapter in terms of our foundation moving forward, and it's it's one that, that is somewhat tricky. So you're going to have to spend a decent amount of time and energy uh, processing and, and working through these, these well, processes um, so that you can have a, a handle on them. So Make sure that you look at the A-level items on the outline that I provided. Um, really try to focus on those. It, it's, it's really easy to get lost in the weeds and just try to remember those A-level items. Try to frame everything around those A-level items. Just our overall summary of respiration in general is sugar goes in, oxygen goes in, carbon dioxide comes out, water comes out, and energy comes out. So you'll see respiration is a multi-step process. When we put all of what goes in, what comes out together, that gives us this equation right here. So just to sort of preview uh, what I'm going to talk about, um, respiration is the process of releasing energy from food. Food is stored energy in chemical bonds. ATP is usable energy for cell work. So don't mix those two terms up. ATP is usable energy, food is stored energy. Maybe you could think of that as potential energy in the form of chemical bonds. Oxygen is going to be hugely important. Um, I can remember when I learned this, embarrassingly, as a graduate student, um, but oxygen we really only need in one place in our whole bodies. We breathe every second of every day to have oxygen in one place, and that's in our mitochondria to accept uh, electrons or, or hydrogen to form water at the end of respiration at the end of the electron transport chain. We'll talk more about that here coming up. Here's uh, kind of the the advantage to cellular respiration. <laughs> Notice that if you just combine uh, an oxygen and some hydrogen you're going to have an explosive release of, of heat energy that's kind of like a hydrogen bomb. Uh, but cellular respiration, we're combining those things through a bunch of steps, and that releases some energy, certainly less than we would get over here, but we can control it, and water. So same reaction, we just go through a bunch of intermediate steps to keep the whole process from exploding and blowing up. So the focus of this chapter, what you need to focus on as you move through it, what are we doing, where are we doing it, what goes in, what comes out. Think about that as you move through all the three phases of respiration. Review from chemistry. Hopefully this is a review. Uh, I call it A minus B plus because I'm not directly testing you over it, but if you don't understand oxidation and reduction, you're going to have a hard time uh, answering a lot of the questions. So notice my comment here. Be careful not to use reduction in lay terms. Just don't use reduction at all in any AP responses unless you're talking about a reduction reaction. That's a good rule of thumb uh, all around. If there is a defined meaning of a word in a biological context, use a synonym if you're trying to use it in some other context. Hopefully that makes sense. When we talk about reduction, we're gaining electrons, we're gaining energy, and we're gaining uh, hydrogens. And if we're talking about oxidation, we're losing those things. So that's how we need to really frame it uh, here in, in AP Bio. In chem, you looked at it a little bit differently, uh, I'm sure, but uh, hopefully you use this term redox, oxidation reduction, redox. So they're, they're essentially backwards of one another. So they're coupled together, always coupled together, you're always going to get a, uh, a gain and a loss because we're doing chemical reactions. Things aren't created nor destroyed. They're just traded around. Like I said, usually paired together. Um, and, and yeah, look for the links. What's giving something up? What's gaining something? If something is giving up one hydrogen, something is gaining one hydrogen, there's a really good chance that those two things are happening side by side. Just like we talked about in our last chapter, how we couple endergonic and exergonic reactions. Many of these reactions are going to be done by phosphorylation or sticking a phosphate group onto something. It's going to, essentially when we add that phosphate group, we're going to energize that molecule for chemical reactions. We're going to turn that molecule on 
and then that molecule is going to go do something else. It's going to occur in all respiring cells um, in both plants, animals, producers, consumers, however you want to say that. Here's a picture. So we've got this enzyme with a substrate that, that's PEP. We're going to add, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to add a phosphate from the PEP to the ADP to energize the ATP. So that short, sort of shows you how adding a phosphate can energize a molecule. Think ADP to ATP. Uh, I, I thought this was a good, um, a good metaphor. If a gas tank explodes, it can't drive very far. So there certainly are better ways to harvest energy than, than the strategies used by ourselves, but we can control the explosion. It's not one massive explosion. It's like the way your car works. We're still combusting. We're just not exploding the, the whole gas tank all at once. We've got a controlled release, so we can harvest a little bit of energy out of that. Our three parts, I should have called this a level A slide, but our three parts to, uh, to cell, trans cell respiration excuse me, are glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, which has about 75 different names, and the electron transport chain. Each of these is going to get a lot more slides, so let's just dive into glycolysis. A little bit of word skills to begin with. Glyco always means glucose, and lysis is always going to mean to split. Think about the lysosome in cells. It split things open. So glyco glycolysis is going to be splitting glucose. It's a universal step in all respiration types. So that hints at the fact that this was probably the first type of cellular energy process. The location of this process is also a hint that it was probably the earliest. So remember, we're focused on what's it doing, where's it happening, what goes in, what comes out. Glycolysis, what's it doing? It's splitting glucose to produce NADH and ATP. So we're going to split a six carbon sugar into a three carbon sugar. And this happens in the cytoplasm. Take a look. So mitochondria is going to be enormous in this chapter. But we're not talking about the mitochondria yet. We're talking about something that happens in the cytosol near the mitochondria. Glucose is going to be split. We're going to produce ATP that way. We've got some electron carrier compounds uh, that are going to shuttle around electrons, move electrons around within the cell. Um, you can imagine if, if this reaction is happening in the cytoplasm, we're not in a uh, membrane-bound organelle, so we've got to make sure we're careful with our electrons. We don't want them just bouncing around willy-nilly inside the cytoplasm. An example uh, is NAD. Uh, these are almost all, we use their acronyms because it's nicotinamide, uh, adenine dinucleotide, that's a mouthful, so we say NAD. You don't need to know NAD, but you should probably be able to recognize it. We've got an oxidized form and a reduced form. Look back if you don't remember what oxidizing and reduction, what those mean, look back. It should make sense that this is a plus, it's oxidized. We've got our hydrogen, it's reduced. Essentially, what the point of these is we're going to turn them on, carry an electron somewhere, and then turn them off. So the, the last part of, of what we should focus on is what goes in, what goes out. In glycolysis, glucose goes in, ATP goes in, ADP goes in, NADH goes in, or I'm sorry, NAD goes in. Got to spend money to make money. We spend 2 ATP to get 4 ATP. We're going to leave with 2 ADP because we're going to break some of these down. Here are our results. 3 carbon acids that are going to be 3 carbon sugars eventually. Uh, ADP, 4 ATP and 2 NADH. So our net result, once we cancel out some of this, is we get 2 ATP per glucose and we get 2 NADHs that we're going to use later. So that's a, a, the real good summary of glycolysis. To dive a little bit more uh, into it, if you look at the top, there's an energy investment phase. Like I said, you got to spend money to make money. So uh, there's a portion of glycolysis where we're using ATP, we're breaking bonds, we're phosphorylating intermediates, and then there's a portion where we're rephosphorylating ADPs and we're ending up with energy payout. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. Notice here, this is the net reaction. Okay, so if we look at the energy investment phase, don't get bogged down and tied up in these big molecules. Now they're not difficult, they're glucose, glucose with a phosphate on carbon-6, 
fructose with a uh, carbon chain on carbon six, and so on. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. But essentially, we're investing energy to add phosphate groups to intermediates that are then going to get carried down. If you here's our glyceraldehyde with our down arrow, and that's carrying through to here, and energy starts to be returned. We start to get our return on our investment. <clears throat> so that's glycolysis. Krebs cycle, uh, I said kind of earlier, it has like 75 different names. Maybe that's an exaggeration. Uh, tribox, tricarboxylic acid cycle is how I learned it as a student. Citric acid cycle is another synonym uh, for, for the Krebs cycle. They all mean the same thing. So what's it doing? It's oxidizing pyruvic acid uh, to carbon dioxide. It produces NADH and FADH2, and it happens in the mitochondria. So this is another place where you can easily get lost in the weeds. Um, so pyruvate, if you remember, pyruvate comes out of glycolysis. So we finish this pyruvate in glycolysis, and then we import it into the mitochondria. From there, we're going to manipulate it. We're going to do some chemistry, and we're going to split this three-carbon molecule into a two carbon molecule. We call that acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA is a big messenger uh, in, in this, this stuff. So requirements, what goes into the Krebs cycle? Uh, don't worry as uh, don't worry as heavily, I guess is the way I'm trying to say it. Uh, I'm not going to straight test you over Krebs cycle requirements and products. It's it you need to know it for the end game for the big AP exam, uh, but for, for my exam, don't worry so much about it. Uh, but, but what does go in, three carbon acid from the Krebs cycle, coenzyme A, and these things. <clears throat> Excuse me. Notice that we need double that for each glucose molecule because we're going to produce, remember, glucose is three carbons. We split in glycolysis, we split it to three carbons. So we're going to double this. And again, on the products, we'll double those. That's where we're going to make CO2. We're making acetyl-CoA. And then our intermediates have been oxidized and or reduced. Here's pyruvate from glycolysis coming in, producing acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA bumps into the Krebs cycle. We're going to do some chemistry. And now we've got a cycle that we can learn lots about. Zoom in a little bit. And this is definitely the college level version of this stuff. Uh, when you get to organic chem, you'll move electrons around, you'll draw the cycle, the, you'll be expected to know all the parts of the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle or whatever you choose to call it. Um, but for, for our course for AP Bio, what's important to know is that there are intermediates that we have to activate. And along the way, some of those intermediates are going to produce ATP and energy. Most of our cell energy uh, comes from the Krebs cycle. So most of what we use uh, comes from the Krebs cycle. Glycolysis certainly happens. Electron transport certainly happens. But the Krebs cycle is, is our primary energy producing mechanism. <coughs> Excuse me. ATP is produced directly in the Krebs cycle. Uh, are by substrate level phosphorylation, so that's going to be adding a phosphate to a substrate. Uh, so that's going to happen from the substrate to, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. We're going from the substrate to ADP. So we're going to remove a phosphate from a substrate and add it to ADP to produce ATP. Electron transport is the third part of um, glycolysis. So uh, electron transport chain is essentially a, a whole bunch of proteins on the inner membrane of the mitochondria that we're going to move things, we're going to manipulate active and passive transport uh, to turn gears, to drive pumps, and to create energy. So we'll pick up with this in lecture two.